this video, what we will try to do is basically go through the workflow or the basic workflow of analysis and design in Comosis. And we will go through the multiple steps of entering elements, creating the loads, creating load combinations, running the analysis, designing and all that. But we will keep the, the actual example extremely simple since the idea of this video is to not really create a very complicated example, but go through the basic steps so that everybody can uh, quickly understand where the commands are located, uh, which commands to use and this and that. And the, basically what order to follow and what, um, what the workflow of analysis and design in Comosis is. So I'll begin with uh, talking about basic uh, entry of the frame elements. Now, if you go to the steel menu, uh, first of all, uh, the basic analysis related elements are, uh, are under the steel menu as well as under the concrete menu. So you can use the beam columns over here as well, as well as the steel. I'm going to give examples mostly related to steel because uh, the, what, it's more or less the same for the concrete one as well. So we have different commands over here, if you notice. Uh, there's a separate one for column, another one for beam, another one for horizontal bracing, another one for vertical bracing, trusses, burdens, girds, etc. And this is a bit different from normal analysis programs in which typically you have just one command for entering frame elements, which asks you for two points. And you keep using the same command because in typical finite element programs, there is no uh, separation of um, these beam groups, because as far as the analysis is concerned, they don't really make a difference. But in since Comosis is not just an analysis and design program, and it's also a detailing and shock drawing production uh, program. Therefore, we for the ease of the ease of the user, we have created this uh, the most commonly used ones over here, and you can use other beam groups as well. So the first thing which needs to be noticed is that we've got separate commands for the most commonly used beam groups. And the, it's a good idea to use the actual command itself. As far as the analysis is concerned, if you want, it won't make a difference. If, if you want, you can go ahead and enter the entire structure using only the beam command and the analysis results uh, will be the same. Uh, but it is in the, during the design and during the detailing that you will notice the differences. So it's a good idea to, to actually use whichever command, uh, whichever beam group you're actually trying to enter. So if you're going to enter a column, it basically asks you for a single point. And it's just, uh, it's a point and shoot thing. You just click on the point and you have your uh, columns. If you double click on the columns, you can change the, um, you can change the, um, for the, so this is the point which you clicked on and how much below that point do you want the column to go and how much above that point do you, uh, do you want the column to go and what the profile is and this and that. We won't go into all these details because these are covered elsewhere since we are only going through the workflow over here. So let's go to the beam command now. And the beam command, unlike the column command, asks for two points rather than one. Basically, all the, all the commands other than the column command will ask for two points. And um, you can basically select those two points in the screen. Now, one thing I want to mention very quickly over here is that when you are entering uh, frames, finite element frames, you will notice that you will not be able to snap to these points. And this is for a per you can if you want to, and there's a way to do it, but uh, we have purposefully limited the snaps only to these, uh, to the joints and to the endpoints, because when you're zoomed out, and since this is a detailing program as well, uh, normally we can snap to all, all these points over here. But in a, in a finite element program, uh, when you're entering the finite element model, you don't want to snap to all those points. So uh, by default, it will only snap to uh, the points which are the actual finite element uh, points. Now, as you're entering the elements, so let me continue by entering a few more beams. As you can see, it, it is snapping directly to the midpoints of the beams as well. But what I want to say right now is that as you will snap, you will see these nodes being created at the endpoints of members. And these nodes are either yellow in color or blue in color. And the difference between the two colors is basically this. A yellow node will tell you that this is, uh, none of the elements framing into this node is continuous. It's the endpoint of all the members. So th there's this one, there's this one, this column, 
All three are framing into the same node, but it is the end point of all three. None of them is continuous at that point. Whenever that is the case, the node, the color of the node will be yellow. And when you double click the node, you can see the connectivity count over here. So the number of connected frames is three, which means that three frames are connecting to this point. However, when you go to the blue ones, you will see that one of the elements connecting will be continuous and everything else will uh, uh, will not be continuous it will be just basically they will be ending at that point but there will be one which is continuous and whenever that one is continuous you will notice that node to be blue and we call these blue nodes intermediate nodes in in commerces so always keep uh, make sure that um, you your your finite element model is correct when, when you're entering the, uh, the model. So you can, what you can do is you can press Alt-D for the various um, draw modes, and you can see on the screen what the actual model looks like. And you will see that once again, you're seeing the nodes, and you're also seeing these little green symbols over here. And these green symbols are uh, representative of your uh, moment releases or any, any release, basically. So uh, they don't really tell you what release is present. And so this, this one is saying that this member has a, had an end release at this point and another release at this point, but you don't know what those re re releases are. What you can do is you can double click on them and you can go to your analysis and you can see that the start has an M22 and M33 release and the end also has an M22 and M33 uh, release as well. It could have been an axial release. It could have been any one of these releases. The symbol would have remained the same. But what's, what it's basically telling you that there's a release in this member, there's a release in this member. As you can see, the columns have not been released. Uh, so by default, uh, all these um, various commands come with certain defaults, and the beam commands in steel come with, uh, with moment releases, as do the horizontal bracing and the vertical bracing. If you want, obviously, you can change these releases by double-clicking on them and going to the Analysis tab and modifying them. Uh, one shortcut which is of use is to just select the, uh, the profile which you want to change and press Control R. Control R basically toggles between the between no no uh, no releases and moment releases. So if that's this is the most commonly uh, used release, these two moment releases in, in steel structures. So you can press Control R to toggle between the two. If you feel that this is basically uh, not looking good as far as you, know, you don't want the clutter on the screen, then you can go to the visibility settings over here and uh, turn off the release symbols. And if you do that, then the release symbols will be turned off and you, you will be left with a much cleaner uh, finite element model to look at. Now, uh, I want to mention one mistake, which is which can be common, and that is that uh, so, for example, if you wanted to enter a beam, and I'm going to purposely make a mistake over here, and I'm going to, uh, instead of snapping over here, I'm going to snap to uh, a point just about maybe uh, two millimeters short of that. So I'm going to say dx minus two. Uh, and when I zoom in there, you see a node over there. Now, obviously, uh, you will not make this mistake very often, but sometimes you do snap to other things uh, in the program. And when you do that, one, one thing you should always be careful about is looking for, looking for this blue node when one element is continuous. And over here, I, was, I should, should have been expecting a blue node. Uh, I, I was expecting this one to connect to this one. And had it connected properly, this node would have turned blue. So if I go to my finite element mode, I will, and as I really zoom in, I will see that I have failed to connect to it. And had I uh, not failed to connect, so let me just take this node and say move linear, and let me just move it two millimeters, the mistake I purposely made. Uh, had, I, had I not done that, the node would have been blue in color. So always be on the lookout for these um, blue nodes whenever you're entering an element which, uh, which connects to another, another element somewhere in the middle of that element. They will, be, they will give you a clue whether you have actually uh, snap to the right point or not. So now let me continue by entering a few other beams just to basically finish a very simple model. Let me just um, go like that, make the two uh, exactly the same as each other, or maybe slightly different. Um, this one is, yeah, it's the same basically. 
and now I can enter my horizontal bracing and for the horizontal bracing I can go to my icon directly and I can just start uh, entering my horizontal bracing like that like that like that I can I can take it all over like that I can finish it off I shouldn't worry too much about the orientation of these members right now because first of all their profiles will change continuously during the analysis and design I can't just keep um, adjusting them every time the profile changes uh, and as we know that the analysis and design is basically an iterative procedure which in which we do in which we analyze and design again and again until we get get to the final uh, results so don't worry uh, at all about how they're located uh, when we get to the detailing part then uh, whoever is doing the detail detailing can sort it out and we discuss this in other videos about auto adjust and uh, commands like that which will help us uh, do that now let's continue with the vertical bracing. So uh, we have the vertical bracing command separately over here, and we can uh, quickly enter a few vertical braces from there to there, from uh, there. Make sure you're snapping to the right point. That's one mistake which is commonly made. Always try to work in uh, the relevant views. Right now, since I'm just showing you the basic flow, so I'm not really too worried about that. But what you should be worried about is ensuring that you, you, don't, you always snap to a proper finite element point. That's the only thing which uh, one needs to be careful about. Now, uh, I'm going to enter some uh, GERTs, and I'm going to enter them for the reason, for the simple reason that I want to actually, we will load the GERTs later for the wind loading. So I'm going to go to my GERT command. There's no Perlin in this particular model. So I'll just go to my GERT command, and I can enter the GERTs directly. I, I also have a specific command for entering GERTs over here, uh, which makes it uh, much easier. So what I can do is I can just select this column and this column, and my GERTs will be created. And the good thing about this command is that uh, although they have been created at the proper location, uh, they are still in perfect accordance with the finite element model. So if I were to uh, press Alt-D, we can see that the GERTs have been are not really violating the finite element model, and uh, but they have been uh, placed at the outer flange of the columns. Now, of course, this column profile might change, and all this might uh, be useless. And in any case, the person who's going to do the detailing will have to enter the, uh, the will have to modify these GERTs to the proper location again. So don't worry too much about that. This command basically makes it a bit easier for us to do that. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, go all around the building. So I can just use the same command, say this column to this column, and then uh, I can turn it around. I can go to the same command and I can say this column to this column. And similarly, I can turn it around again. And I can say from uh, here to here. So these are uh, these are very quick ways of entering the GERTs, and uh, it's uh, since we are going to be doing a lot of loading and maybe manual modification as well. What I can do is I can uh, quickly select all of them, press M because there are four macros now, the four macros for the GERTs, and I could just uh, right click and say uh, explode these macros because now I want to play with them uh, manually. Now, uh, if, I, if you remember that all the beams which were entered had moment releases in them, so, and we had turned them off, so I want to turn them back on now, uh, just to show, show them to you once again. Uh, and let's go to the line mode. And we can see that even these frames oh, in this direction uh, are released, whereas this is our, our basic moment direction, frame direction. So the columns, the strong side of the columns is like this. So I basically want this beam and this beam and this beam over here not to be released, not to have a moment release. I have my braces in this direction, uh, but in this direction, I'm not gonna have enter braces. So I want basically this one and this one and this one to not have moment releases. So I can just press enter and I can clear any release and say, okay. And say the changes to multiple objects, yes. And now the releases have gone. If, if I were to press Alt D again, I can see that these these elements no longer have the moment releases. And this is what I wanted. I can turn the releases off uh, because they're creating a, cl a clutter. 
and uh, yeah basically this is what I want. Now uh, the structures which I want to uh, enter and go ahead with the analysis and design is more or less complete. So uh, there is one thing left which is the constraints, uh, the, um, the restraints rather, and the nodes at the bottom of the columns uh, need to be restrained, these nodes over here. So what we can do is we can just look at it from the side and just go like something like that. And now we've selected all the nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six nodes, but we've also selected these braces. Obviously we know that on the fly filtering is available, so we press enter, we can see the nodes and the joints separately. If I would select the nodes and then just double click on these nodes over here, the, only the, the six nodes will remain selected. You can see how many objects are selected on the bottom left corner over here. And what I can do is I can select from any one of these uh, presets. So I can say, just give me a, a hinge at, uh, at the base of all the columns. I can have a fixed column, I can have a hinged column, or I can have them uh, modify them manually as, as I want. In, in this case, let's just keep it simple and keep them hinged and say OK. And the moment we do that, these symbols uh, appear, which represent that some sort of a restraint has been applied uh, to these columns. Now, uh, one thing to note is that we've been entering physical elements rather than actually finite elements. Now, we all know that in the background, this beam will be broken down from here to here and here to here as far as the finite elements is concerned. But in Commosis, we don't enter the actual finite elements like that in broke, as, as a broken beam. We enter the physical element the way it will be detailed and, and manufactured and sent to the site. And in the background, uh, when the analysis is being done, Commosis will break, break down this physical element into its subcomponents as far as the finite element is concerned. So it's a good idea to never forget that eventually, uh, would never forget what, uh, how you want this beam or this column to be manufactured. Uh, these things can be changed later, but it's always a good idea, always a better idea for the engineer to try to think ahead, and especially like things like location of uh, splices, for example. So if, for example, uh, the engineer wants the column to be spliced uh, somewhere over here, say about 400 millimeters from the, from the base, then uh, it's a good idea to actually think it uh, at, uh, w w when they're doing the analysis and design, so that this information is also transfer to the detailer later on. But if it's not, then that's fine as well. The, the detailer can always break the element from there for, to create the splice. But what I'm trying to say is that don't, um, even if you want to create splices, don't worry about the, the buckling length calculations because, com because Commosis is very, has a, a very nice, uh, very accurate buckling length calculator. And uh, what it will, even if you have a splice over here and another splice over here, it will still find the full length of the physical element and uh, do a lot more and we'll get to that uh, later but the whole point uh, the point i'm trying to make over here is that uh, when you're entering the steel work try to uh, look in, uh, into the future try to look at how the detailer will be detailing this model and try to create the splices try to uh, only enter physical elements like i said don't break them down into into the final elements enter the physical elements from eight from one point to the next and that will be the best way of uh, creating the model.